Hi, I'm John from Just News. John from Just Whiskey doing Just News. If you like today's show, we have a lot to cover, but a bunch of cool stuff. Give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. And consider becoming a Patreon with the link in the description below. Thanks so much for the Patreons that I do have that help support this channel. And remember, folks... It's Just Whiskey doing Just News. Today is the day before Halloween, 2023, October 30th. And I'm going to uh, steal a line from, uh, lift a gag from G Whiskey. And uh, if you stick around to the end, I'll tell you what's in my glass and why I'm drinking it. And also, too, a reminder that the Oswas. The online Scotch Whiskey Awards, um, the voting ha deadline has passed, <clears throat> and now they're going to be showing the winners. Um, Ralphie and Roy are going to be doing this show this coming Saturday night, November 4th. I'm not sure exactly of the time, but check uh, Roy from Aquavides uh, channel. Stay tuned, and you will find out the exact time. <clears throat> okay, so by now you've probably heard that <clears throat> the Diageo special releases of 2023, um, they hit my shelves here in Massachusetts on October 7th. And the only one I decided to buy, which I reviewed a couple times actually, is the new Talisco. <clears throat> um, the other ones I'm passing on. But yeah, <clears throat> and then in no particular order... Um, Ardbag, they have their new special release out called the Anamorphic. And what they did with that is they took off the barrel heads to expose more surface area to char these casks to try to get uh, a, a high mocha content. Okay, um, it's an NAS 48.2%. 220 dollars yeah i saw that sitting on the shelves next to many of the diageo special releases and the glass case um as long as as well as art bags heavy vapors and at least one or two previous ones um art bag at some time sometime some point in the near future is going to be coming out with yet another special release um an nas and it's going to be called spectacular it's going to come at 46 percent abv and they're calling it a phenolic phenomenon and what they're doing is they're marrying port casks and ex-bourbon casks so fingers crossed if it's anything kind of like the brisabecue which was all things considered fairly priced you know well 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 south of a hundred dollars okay so i'm hoping maybe that one will come out um well south of $100 as well, and I might be intrigued by that. And also, too, there's an Ardbag 17-year-old at 40% ABV. I, I don't know what's going on with that. I'm assuming it's going to be a travel retail, but... Kilholman, look out pretty soon. They'll be coming out with their 13th edition of Kilholman 100% Isla Barley, 50% uh, ABV, and... This year's release of the uh, 13th edition is going to be 100% ex-bourbon, okay? Um, the last few have had um, some ex-sherry in there. and Anyway, yeah. So um, the, the Isla 13th edition is going to retail for about $120. So they're not cheap. They are going up. Um, lightly peated at 20 ppm. And that release would be 13,000 bottles worldwide, but only 1,170 coming to the USA. And then Indri, Indri Trini, which I've reviewed. Okay, been a lot of talk about that. Um, their second release is a special release, and they're calling it the, uh, the Indri Diwali 
or Diwali Collector's Edition 2023, uh, made from uh, six row Indian barley. And it's going to be cast strength NAS. NAS, but they're saying this is considerable age considering the climate, but they're not saying the age. Um, NAS cast strength 60.5% ABV. It's going to re retail for about $135. And the artwork on it is spectacular. Um, it's, it's got some really nice uh, floral images with a, a very bright, fully colored uh, peacock on there. The bottle looks incredible. Um, I believe that particular one just won Best World Whiskey uh, again. Um, yeah, and this one here is going to be um, peated, um, matured in XPX sherry casks. So a bit of a sweet peat. I think we have something to look forward to. That has me very, very, very intrigued. Then Lafroy is coming out with the Element series, and their 1.0, which is their first release of the Elements, is going to be NAS, uh, coming in at 58.6% ABV. It's going to retail for $210, so a little on the pricey side. And what they're doing, I guess, they're playing around with three different types of mashing and fermentation styles. The three different styles are a combination of cloudy and semi-cloudy wort to evoke more tropical notes. The use of both 8.5 tons and 11 ton mashes and the use of 100% Isla malt. And um, it's supposed to highlight the raw materials used by Lefroig. So it to me, it sounds a little bit like maybe what Ardbag is kind of doing a little bit, but um, it, it does sound very intriguing, but that's a hefty, hefty price, tra price, price tag. Um, not very new news, but it's kind of interesting because Halloween is tomorrow. Um, Dingle has released, they're releasing a, a series, and the first in the series is called Sam Hain. It's an NAS 50.5% ABV, retails for $150. Um, and it's the first edition, and it's called the Wheel of the Year. Um, they're going to have eight different offerings in this series. And the Sam Hain is first fill ex bourbon, finished for two years in Muscatel casks. And it's named after the ancient fire ritual that transitions the end of summer into winter, which they say is the beginning of the origins of Halloween um, that goes back centuries. Okay. Yes, I do have notes. There's no way I could remember all these details. Um, Compass Box. Compass Box ha uh, is going to be coming out with yet a um, new, I think it's the final release in their... Um, the reimagined extinct blends, and it's be, going to be called Celestial, and it's going to come in at 50% ABV, and like I said, I believe it's the fourth and final um, offering of their four series, and this one is going to have a um, blend of, um, there's going to be malt and grain, but made up of Glen Elgin, Pulteney, um, Ardbag, and Kalila. Okay, so... Um, and I'm sure that's going to come with one hell of a hefty price tag as well. Another one that I'm very intrigued by because I'm really into the art labels. Some of them are really cool, not Compass Box. We're moving on to Glen Scotia is coming out with a series. Um, and the first release is called The Mermaid. It's a 12-year-old, so it has an age statement. And the artwork looks phenomenal. I would really... Um, I'm very interested in, in, in acquiring a bottle of that. Um, and it's finished in Paulo Cotardo. So uh, for eight months, I believe. Um, so I think the first 11 years and three months is in uh, ex bourbon. And then the last eight months in Paulo Cotardo sherry casks. Um, it's going to come in at 54.1% ABV. And it's going to retail for around a hundred dollars, 
So in the scope of things, that's not too bad. You're getting a 12-year, high ABV, great artwork, a little bit of a gimmick for around $100. Then at some point, too, um, Brooklady is going to be releasing their first with their newer distillery, um, they're an 18-year-old, okay? Um, and that's going to be at 50% ABV, like almost all their offerings are. I'm sure that's going to come with one hell of a hefty price tag. They're also coming out with the new Beer Bali, which I am a fan of. Um, and it's going to be the 2013. So I'm just guessing it's going to be very close to a 10-year-old. Um, yeah. And then um, unrelated news. I'm sure you heard it by now, too. Um, the island of Isla in Scotland. Chivas Brothers is building another distillery there and there's at least two or three others breaking ground or in the planning investment stage as well i've never been it's on my bucket list um i definitely want to go there probably probably in two years from now my main concern is i've never been there but my main concern is when i start hearing about all this these new distilleries there's already a housing, a challenging housing market and rental market there already. Um, but, you know, call someplace paradise and kiss it goodbye, right? And that's my concern is, you know, in the next few year, few short years, we really could see, um, in my opinion, Isla turn into a maybe a, a, a heavily populated, more touristy than it you know, um, so uh, be careful what you wish for, all right? Um, and then there's also, too, um, the new Kilcarran 16-year-old from 2023 that just hit the USA recently. Uh, it's been in the UK for a little while now, and I'm excited about that. Matter of fact, I have a bottle of it. I haven't opened it yet. I don't have physical possession of it, but I do have it um, coming to me, um, and it's going to be... Uh, 65% X sherry, 30% X bourbon, and 5% rum. Um, I heard it's a banger. I'm very much looking forward to trying that. And then the USA is always a good six months behind. We just got the, uh, the Springbank 10 cast strength, first edition of, of the Springbank 10 cast wine exploration series. And it was the, the one that just came out on our shelves a couple of weeks ago um, was the uh, finished in PX. But the second one, which is my understanding, probably available in the UK. It's going to be a little while before we get to the US. Springbank 10 cash strength, Palo Cortado finished, which I'm very much looking forward to. And it's, it's, it's a hefty finish. You can probably even call it a second maturation because um, the Springbank 10 cash strength, Palo Cortado, that's on the horizon, is six years in ex-bourbon and four years in Palo Cotado. Again, that's probably going to come with a, a hefty price tag, but um, good luck getting one. But if and when it comes around my area, I am going to try <laughs> to, to get one of those because that sounds um, very, very intriguing. Well, thank you for sticking around um, to the very end here. The mystery pour in my glass is Highland Park Cast Strength Batch 1. And the reason why I'm drinking it, because two reasons. Well, the, it, it's 63.3% ABV. This stuff is ballsy and, uh, and rough, and it really needs a lot of water. But I have a toothache. I had a, a, a cracked tooth. A couple of weeks ago, they were able to pull half of the tooth out, but the other half, which is the main part, they can't pull it until January 10th, and then they're going to, I guess we're going to be putting an implant in there because it's just too far to the gum line. Every couple of days, it kind of acts up, and what I found is just uh, by putting a little bit of this in, in my cheek where that tooth is, it really numbs the hell out of it, and... Uh, and soothes it and it's actually feeling it hurt all day 
but I've had a couple of blasts of that and uh, it's really subsided. So if you have a toothache, <laughs> go for some Highland Park, high, high uh, octane uh, ABV and uh, it'll temporarily get you through what you need to get through. Um, so um, thanks so much. Like, subscribe, consider becoming a Patreon. It's Just Whiskey doing Just News. Hats off to you all, and take care, folks. <laughs>